Thank you everyone and thank you to all the panelists for being here today. Uh, probably a quick sort of introduction would be great in terms of what you all are doing currently at your individual sort of companies and what's keeping you excited. So Lalita, you've had a, we'll start with you first, you've had an excellent campaign which has uh, you know, caught everyone's attention and uh, you know, obviously you are the payment rails for all these transactions. So it's a good sort of macroeconomic view of what's happening in gaming can come through you. What are you currently seeing when it comes to the overall gaming ecosystem and its contribution to sort of what you're seeing as building Rupees brand with? It would be great to start with that. Okay. Hey, thanks for the um, bit about the ads. Yes, the team did do a good job and thankfully it has worked. These are hits and misses. This time it was one hit. Uh, as National Payment Corporation of India, we have two sort of relationship, dual relationship with the gaming community. One is of course that uh, the transactions that happen via gaming, both core gaming and non-core gaming, uh, reflective of, uh, reflect onto our systems via UPI as well as via Rupee as brands and products and of course other stuff. Uh, as Rupee brand, brand Rupee has been looking to, you know, we position ourselves as cool, sporty, contemporary, modern looking and therefore for us sports is an inevitable uh, a space that we have tried to occupy as a brand, uh, one of the top BFSI brands that actually works on sports. Naturally, gaming and esports is the next step for us because we believe that esports is sort of an extension of sports. Today, uh, a large portion of media that exists is divided into entertainment and sports, and within sports, it's now getting steadily towards the esports and the gaming portion. So, for us, that is the next place that we're looking to explore. We have done some trial and error this year uh, in the gaming, esports, metaverse, slash, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera space. Uh, we are still exploring, we are learning, we are developing. Hopefully, we'll be taking some steps soon. Right. So, and there are two parts to this, right? There's the overall sort of a way to access gamers through being part of the esports community and then there is the co-game, in-game worlds which are being developed as branded experiences, whether it's inside of your Minecraft and Roblox and you did something with Roblox recently. That's right, we, were, we did, uh, what we did is we created a metaverse via, because we were IPL sponsors, what we did is that we created a metaverse in Roblox yeah. where we developed a cricket game where people could come on, play the game, win awards, win vouchers, win, uh, engage with them and it was actually quite an experience that we had, we had a lot of learning curve. We are trying to expand that into larger metaverses because we would like to uh, move out of that closed door community and perhaps do a lot more there. So our experience has been, there are, there's of course a learning curve for a brand that I believe that as gaming is a completely different community via, you know, versus the other community, uh, other stuff that you do as a brand. While it's easier to, to perhaps predict OTT television, gaming has its own slower curve, its own celebrities, it has its own set of people that you would uh, you have to carefully take a step. It's a completely different strategy that you're looking at. Yeah, and speaking of that, great segue into Suyash, who's uh, using those insights to create a whole new line of bags. Uh, you're creating a new line of uh, luggage for focused on gamers. So tell us a little bit about how did that come about and what insights led you to that? See, uh, we all know VIP as uh, first brand we see when we want to carry something. So, uh, we saw this whole community growing and uh, for us Skybags is a brand which uh, addresses to the youth, uh, to the youngest possible uh, generation with dispensable income. So, when we got the insight that uh, they are into gaming and they are passionate about it and they want to make a career out of it, we had to ensure that whatever accessories they have, they fit in a backpack and they, they can carry with, uh, carry it with themselves. So what we did was uh, we took one of the stalwarts in the gaming community and we said tell us what are your needs and we would want to know how we can design something for people who want to carry. They just don't want to fit in to the backpacks, luggages that they have right now and uh, make something very specific, very customized for them. And uh, that started our journey 
and today we are building something which can cater to around 60 70 million of these gamers in india who who always struggle with uh, uh, something, how to carry a particular accessory, how to carry their uh, laptops which are high-end, how to cushion them well. So, yeah, uh, this range is probably coming around August, September time and uh, we have great plans for it. So, our association with gaming has come out of need to provide for the community rather than choosing them as a cohort in a marketing plan. So that's how we are treating gaming as yeah. yeah, that's interesting. I think the running theme will always be about how gaming on the consumer side is probably far bigger than and it's under indexed on the addict side. So to that, Piyush, Pocket's been around for many years providing solutions for folks to advertise with casual games. How have you seen that change now? How do you think it's become sort of a form of niche, it's become more mainstream and any comments on the size of it to educate marketeers about what trick they're missing? Yeah, hi. I think the change, the shift which has happened post-COVID in the last three years, uh, as you said, niche has become mainstream. Um, the numbers are talking and numbers at our server, we get up close to around 280 million uh, since last two months in a monthly number, which is 20% of India's population. That's reflecting more on the casual game uh, side of it, what we get at the consumer brands and wherein they take their message to reach out to the using the vehicles which are available in the casual gaming ecosystem. And uh, this, this is also growing fast along with what a hardcore game ecosystem is also growing. So the media consumption habits, uh, we also perceive it has changed a lot. We've been hearing from CPG brands wherein they internally have done a lot of research and insights in their teams that uh, uh, there are cord cutters which are shifting from, to, from television from linear television to uh, gaming also and OTT platform also, which is directly landing on digital, wherein there is no more. I could see in my vicinity also, none of my cousins are on television. Like there are about 13 cousins I have. Nobody is on. So, hello. So that is, that is a major shift which has happened. I see, though I am hooked up to television still, but my kids 17 and 13, both none of them are on television. Either they stream or they play. These are the two activity on any screen. That's how the major shift has happened. And uh, though the, the supply, the reach is among us, but the brands also need to embrace in terms of, uh, so that the mainstream can be, uh, utilized and they become early adopters and then they can leverage more out of it. So before we get to Shishti, I would love to talk to you, Anirudh, about this because you've been around for seven odd years now and you must have seen it's gone from endemic brands like your mobile phones and PC hardware and OEM manufacturers to non-endemic brands. Are you seeing that growing now? Is it becoming acceptable, especially when it comes to esports? Uh, is it big enough as a category now that you're seeing traditional advertisers reach out for this? Yes, you know, gaming is, is a very wide and very established uh, media right now, right? It is now becoming, very much becoming like cricket in India, where acceptability for, for content is very diverse. So it is able to uh, promote and also get to the brands and also to an audience which is able to consume a lot of products in terms of FMCGs as well, in, in terms of travel now, for example, VIP is getting into it, Mercedes is getting into it, MG is getting into it, and these are not endemic brands which are out there, right? Uh, previously, we used to see that there was AMD, Microsoft, all the endemic brands which are coming in, but right now, people are seeing that the con consumer, basically, who was out there uh, watching a different kind of media before, watching television now, now it has moved on to gaming and it is moving in very quickly right now. And uh, it provides a range of audience which starts from an eight year old which goes to 35, 40 odd, right? And all these people who are out there are spending approximately three to four hours on gaming, which makes gaming an alternate media for every brand to get their eyes on. And also it is, an, it is a particular sport which has a range of people who are also having a range of spending power as well. <clears throat> when I say spending power, I'm talking about people who can buy a one lakh rupee phone to a particular product which can be as cheap as a 17 rupee fingertip, uh, fingertip glove which allows you to game better on phone, right? 
So that is the kind of range that gaming basically offers and has space for every brand, every consumer. And um, I think that that, that, is, that is media which, which is one of the greatest, uh, great, I would say that it is one of, the, one of the times wherein India is observing a great media transformation wherein gaming, tech and lifestyle is coming together. You know, uh, Shishti, you seem to be somebody who's been born digital with their strategy, right? You've kind of in many ways, you're not somebody who needs to be converted. It's a, it seems like it's a core pillar to what you guys are doing at Monster. Well, when you looked at differentiating your brand from others in the same space, what made you want to look at gaming and especially esports within gaming? I think gaming is a really broad term, but within gaming, esports, what made you want to kind of look at that as your core pillar? So, you know, globally, Monster, what we do is we have various pillars that we actually look at for our brand. And that ranges from gaming to motorsports to music, dance, everything. And uh, that's all going to be region specific and country specific. But uh, there was a team globally who sat, researched what is that one common pillar which is going to be running throughout all the countries. And I think that was when gaming actually won the bet. Because, and even in India, we see, you know, especially after the pandemic, the kind of transition that has happened to gaming and with everything becoming so cheap, you know, like the smartphones, free internet. So that is when we decided that gaming is going to be the core pillar for us in India specifically, especially because of how people have now moved on into that smartphone segment because everything is so cheap and the free internet service as well. Right. And, you know, uh, one of the things is going to ask is when you look at the broad category of gaming and you're thinking about, and this is to anybody uh, on the panel, there's a bunch of verticals. There's obviously esports, then there's influencers, then there is, you know, just inventory buys on video, then there's in-game worlds where you can actually create these worlds inside of these. How are you all thinking about the mix? Because otherwise it's just like very sort of 30,000 feet at gaming, right? When you look at each one of these verticals, do you all, are you all, is it developed enough of, as a market that you're thinking of each one of these as a mix? Or are you just saying broadly, here's my spends, out of them this much is gaming, and within gaming, esports is dominant, so that's what we're going to put money in. Yeah. Are you all thinking with more texture around this? Is, is it evolved enough right now for you all to think I can, about it? I can take that, you know. Um, so I feel that it totally depends on the kind of consumer, again, that you're targeting. For example, um, at, at first, gaming is content creation, right? Um, you are creating content in different kind of segments. Be it esports, it has tournaments and it has uh, a skill level content that is out there <clears throat> on, a, on a POV level and also on a tournament level. Then there are casual games which allows you to be, uh, which allows a, a particular brand to be inside a game and promote itself in a very diverse kind of audience. And then there are segments to it which are, which are probably games in which you can promote your brand inside also. For example, uh, there's this game which is very popular amongst, amongst kids which is a Chota Beam game in which a Chota Beam basically has to run like a, like a temple run, right? So for people who are playing that particular game, they're very, they're very young. So how you can promote a product is by placing a parlegi inside it, right? So instead of coins, you're, you're basically going ahead and <clears throat> and collecting Palaji biscuits. That's for younger people, right? And then moving forward from that particular aspect, moving to a game which is Battle Royale, when you have to energize yourself, you can have a drink like Monster in it, right? So that comes as a second part to it. And uh, that comes in a part wherein it is a very rush game. It's an eSports centering game, right? So you have to have that kind of energy levels uh, to, uh, to play that game and hence Monster can see itself inside the game. And then if you look at uh, casual gaming, uh, an era wherein uh, you are just going ahead and simply playing out um, and, and chilling right now. So you have IPs like Spider-Man which comes into play where you can have a, a game which is totally IP based in terms of uh, you see a movie character out there and you can live with it also inside the game. Right. Or, or you can also go ahead and, and drive a car in the game as well. So, Lalit and Shuyash, uh, when you're looking at sort of which titles to go after, are there any ones which come to mind, ones which may have been banned or returned and uh, ones which have been around for a while? So, do you all pick and choose between, to Anirudh's point, there's a gradient, right? There's hyper-casual, casual, casual mid-code, double-A, triple-A. Then there's another vector which is PC, mobile, console and then there is cross-play. 
So, when you are thinking this through, when you go through all the filters, which ones are part of your strategic plan? So, you know, just like he said, um, it depends upon not just the target segmentation that you're looking after. It is also where, where your brand is standing at that point of time. And as Rupe, where do you see it for this year? Exactly. So, to answer that question is actually very tough because for me, it's a very complex layer I have to navigate. Do I have to do surround content? Do I need to go after influencers? Do I need to do in-game branding? Because in-game branding is a long game. It's a very long game. Do I, am I looking at doing esports, which is touch and go? Uh, or uh, am I looking at creating? Is it, so basically, this needs a five-year strategy. It's not something that can happen over a period of time. Even five years, maybe less, uh, but because you're going to start building for some place for a brand like Rupe. We have, I have to establish my brand first there, right? So for me, it's a very complex answer, which I haven't actually thought through completely. We are learning and going about it. But we do know that uh, if, so, you know, when you talk about Rupe, we are talking about credit cards, debit cards, payment systems. Now, in that, if I have to go after a target segment, my age group that I'm looking at is only a particular above an age. The current gaming segment starts at eight years of age, and my gaming, my segment actually begins much after 20. In the gaming world, if you're above 20, you're considered the older gamers. And in my world, they're new to credit, new to banking, new yeah. to payment systems. So it's a little bit of a balance which we are trying to figure out because yeah. we can't go after a 13-year-old yeah. uh, for obvious reasons. But then they, are, they have parents who pay for that. So all of those answers we have to figure out. And so yes, you are interesting because you're also designing products and also marketing to these same. So what is your view on the list? So uh, just to give you a fair idea of our category, we are just 12% penetration in India. So for us, using any of these mediums, cohorts to advertise or to create awareness is the primary goal. Uh, the, the mix is such that we want to reach out with particular set of products with to a particular cohort and we are designing for them. So uh, if you ask me if I want to do a long-term equity association with any game, I wouldn't think so because this generation changes its trends as as soon as a quarter ends and that's how we also have to be agile, nimble with our designs and their requirements. So we primarily look at gaming as a design solution to pick up insights of the uh, gaming community and then market them products just to increase awareness that we are here to offer what they want to relate to. Because today Gen Z wants to carry something, a bag for them as an accessory and they want to use it as a part of their character build, a personality that they carry. So if I tomorrow release a, a, a Spider-Man series for somebody who plays Valorant, it will be totally, totally not sync it with them. So it's, we have to be very nimble and agile with what the community wants and we advertise to them and our involvement is that wanes off as soon as the trend changes. Yeah. And, you know, it will be amiss given that there's been a big announcement two, three days ago with a new computing platform now launching. Um, and, and the topic is how do you see this uh, next wave of media consumption beyond the obvious things that it's too expensive and it'll take a while. What do you generally think about when it comes to your thinking about these new form factors and how you think they will be adopted? It's a while away for it to launch, but just a little bit of future gazing before we open it up to the audience to ask questions. So, it's again, uh, for us, it's a wait, as you said, it's a wait and watch. We are a, a product company and uh, we, we pick insights from the consumers. If, I, if you ask me, uh, these, these platforms, these technologies, more will come through. Uh, and uh, it will consolidate into something which uh, will give us an insight of saying that we have to start building products which will be in sync. Like today we, do, we don't do uh, mixed reality or we don't do uh, artificial reality, uh, augmented reality for that matter. Uh, the thing is that we are in a wait and watch game when these things will be scalable and people will look at a product and would want to have an experience in that. So it's too early for a, a, a product company to make a judgment on that, uh, but yeah. 
Yeah, but you know, uh, think of it as, you know, now that this is something, are you all beginning to experiment or thinking about experimenting with the more here and now things like augmented reality filters, just to get warmed up with, you know, playing around with these mediums as marketeers and seeing what it means to do that. And Lalita, that's for you and Shishti, it'll be great to hear your thoughts as well. So, you know, National Payment Corporation of India is a tech first firm. Yeah. Technology excites us, literally. Uh, so, anything that we can do in that space connects inevitably with our ethos. Just, just there, we're just hoping, waiting, watching the tech scene all the time. What you said about, you know, the entire AR, VR scene, we're watching it and like you said, the first reaction was it's too expensive. However, the adaptation and adoption towards it may grow inevitably and we see that AI is something that we are waiting, watching, we are trying to understand it again. It is a far more evolved space than, uh, if I may say, the gaming community in India for the simpler reason that in India the, uh, the acceptance towards AI may be far higher. But uh, we are also waiting and watching. But technology-wise, it could be an alternative that we are also exploring in the various output, as an output device, which we are using for even marketing. Shishi, what's your view? So AI, not currently for us in India, but uh, that's again, because… And AR? Anything AR and VR also is something that we are, you know, we've started discussions about and everything, but that's not something that we are going to focus on this year itself. We may over a period of time and like Lalita mentioned, you know, that it is something that is not just very expensive, but that's something that people in India also need to start adopting. So we need to take a very, you know, uh, we need to think about it properly and then take a call as to how we want to go about it. And so instead of that, that, uh, you know, the things that you were talking about, the different verticals like onboarding brand ambassadors or doing in-stream brandings, those yeah. are the things that we are actually looking at doing because that's something that will be easily adopted in India specifically. So, Lalita kind, kindly avoided that question, but I'm going to ask all of you, which games are you excited to partner with going forward in this year uh, in order to be associated with communities that you want to work with? Do you have any picks and choices which you think are going to be ascendant? Team Soul. Sorry? Team Soul. Got it. And I mean, they are our core people. So yeah. That's something. And, that Anirudh, I'm assuming you have to be agnostic, but in terms of just as a you know business owner, which ones do you think are going to grow well? Teams, you are asking. Like? Teams and games. Which games do you think are going to be ones which are ascendant over so this? I can like. It is very evident that PGMI is on a roll right now. Yeah. Right. Uh, what we have also seen is that gaming has also um, kind of adapted its way when it when the game was not there. So it was doing fairly well when, and when the game BGM was not there, it was Valorant which was prevailing. Yeah. <coughs> and the GTA is another. Yeah, GTA was also one of one yeah. of the games which so was. Top three prevailing. would be. So yeah, to. so um, if if I have to talk about PC, right, it would be Valo, yeah. GTA, right, and all the casual games as well. They were also very nice. And then if I talk about the mobile games, right, I would say I would count my bets on Ludo also. Right? Yeah. Very popular, very nice, very interactive as well. Uh, but if I talk about viewership and, and consumption of that particular game, then it would be BGMI and Free Fire, of course. And Piyush, your inventory view of the world would be? Which ones do you think are going to I think so. Upside? We are not obsessed with this particular game. We've been uh, serving ads in every other game. Right. So, by and large, any title, you name it, uh, uh, a little bit of hardcore keep moving away from advertising because they have an app purchase model, they keep running tournaments, so they, that time they remove the ads. But 90% uh, of the ads uh, are running on all the games. And uh, uh, Ludo King is one title which has been there uh, consistently in the top 10 since last two and a half year during COVID. Uh, the popular games for the brands demand, Candy Crush, Temple Run, Sub Subway Server, they go by the name, they see that much of consumption, each individual game is having a I think 40 to 50 million per month consumption. So that's the game they look for and uh, then ultimately it's the audience targeting what we look for. We don't go by yeah. selling in terms it's of a particular game specific as a title. Uh, audience targeting and then you have the various other filters on affinity and all which you can look for. Yeah. So that, that's the approach. The brands are also now embracing it. We've been also pitching that way and uh, that's and Suyash, what are you thinking when you're designing your next line of products, when you're picking up influencers to co-design this with, which, which games are you thinking of? 
So for the current range, we are looking at BGMI and Valorant because those are the accessories that they carry and uh, that's why they would need our bags. Uh, but uh, having said that, uh, we, are, we are designing for smaller accessories also. So we are going to do uh, smaller, uh, smaller carry cases and uh, much more. So I would say any game for that matter uh, works for us. But I am very bullish on BGMI coming back. Uh, there, it will get a wave of uh, new age gamers who haven't seen it for a while and adopting gaming very now. So that's BGMI is one I'm looking forward to. Lalitha, would you want to add any color to this? Now that so uh, depending upon the genre of the game we are going after, if it is FPS, we will probably choose the top ones there, which is which is obvious from the download list that you see. Same goes for strategy games. If it, it would probably be Dota or Clash Royale or Clash of Clans or something like that. Depending upon the, the segment, the genre that we are going at, we'll probably invent in, invest in it. But uh, it again, like like you know, he mentioned, like Piyush mentioned, that the problem with core gaming is ad blockers and all of those things that come into play. So inevitably, the strategy changes. But we personally, personally, I would have a favorite game. But at, when it comes to an in company level, we do, we are not so um, discriminative, if I may say that. I want to ask you which one it is. Uh, <laughs> let's open it up for questions from the audience. If there are any, uh, to, uh, are there any? Yeah, we have somebody there. Hi, this is. Hi, uh, my name is Pankaj. I represent the QU Media. Uh, we have uh, just entered into the gaming sector just a couple of months back. Pankaj Rai, this is from QU Media. We have just entered into the gaming segment a couple of months back. And uh, my question is to Piyush that uh, where do you see, you know, the gaming ecosystem in terms of the advertising and the revenue that in the next three years, uh, what should be the, you know, uh, pie of an advertising through gaming in the entire digital ecosystem? And, uh, and how, uh, you know, how this is going to be, uh, I will say, you know, how it is going to be phased out in front of the overall edX if we compare it from the television media because what is happening is right now, you know, people talk about a lot that, you know, uh, uh, I see in my around surroundings, environment, people are consuming more of games and less of televisions. Obviously, uh, I come from a television background. I know that what is happening over there also and we have entered into the gaming segment. So, I know what is happening over here also. Where do you see in the next three years that this is the estimated numbers which should be the, you know, advertising pie in the overall you know, digital ecosystem from the gaming segment. Hello. Yeah. So, roughly from the digital edX, what the last reports had come out, close to around 40,000 crore is what the digital edX in India is. So, it's also hovering, uh, surpassing the television number, uh, I believe, uh, this year, what is what is being aiming to. Uh, the gaming is almost contributing 15% out of it, as of now. Uh, what we, uh, from our understanding and uh, the reports which has been reflecting, uh, the pie should go in the next two to four years, what you said, it should cross easily 25% of that. Uh, with the way the, the casual gamers numbers and the hardcore gamers numbers are growing and when the brands are also embracing it uh, pretty well, uh, I really see this will cross 25% in the next two to four years. Cool. Any other questions? Actually, Samir, I want you to, uh, you to answer that as well. <laughs> what, what, do we, what do you estimate I as? I think 300 to 400 million is the TAM in terms of advertising. Overall, it's a $3 billion market. 2 billion is coming from RMG. 1 billion is from in-app purchases. And the rest, rest is about 300 to 400 million, I would say, is uh, 1.8 is RMG. 200, 300 million is what I would say is currently growing at about 30% CAGO. So, 300 to 400 million growing at 30 to 40 percent is the programmatic advertising market in terms of game, in-game in, in ads. Okay, any other questions? <laughs> All right, great. Thank you everyone for your time. Oh, there's one. Hi, my name is Sarah. 
My name is Architect Pallavi. I am a founder of The Digital Pod, which is a marketing and innovation company across the globe. My question here is, uh, because we have so many gaming, uh, it's in a gaming industry, so many people are coming up. There are ads which are going to run on these gaming platforms. So what is the challenge when it comes to the gaming industry? And what is the challenge as an advertiser on gaming platform? Because this challenge is going to be there when you have so many players to bring a competitive advantage. So how you bring that competitive advantage when we have so many gaming platforms and even it is going to be used by so many people for advertisements? Anyone wants to take that? I think that you should just, just email anirudh at the rate abandgaming.com. <laughs> that will solve everything for you. So, you know, that is what we basically do. Uh, we help brands to invest money in the right directions in the gaming ecosystem because it is very diverse as we are discussing, right? So, it is filled with casual space, esports, then semi casual, then triple A titles, and everything. And it has different IPs and different types of contents as well, right? So, uh, to understand that fully, I think you should definitely get into the space. Also, get, uh, learn about it yourself as well and also hire an expert to help you with that. And uh, with the previous experiences, I think that anybody, uh, any brand which is out there who is, uh, wants to place themselves, like VIP is doing right now, they are riding the wave of, of the gaming uh, ecosystem uh, and, the, and, uh, and the viewership right now. And what they are basically trying to do is that you have to be very specific in terms of what kind of product is, is the market fit for you and then target the right kind of audience that particular game has to offer. And that is a simple statement and then there are top complexities that an agency can help you with. And if you want programmatic solutions, you can get in touch with Piyush. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, thank you everyone for taking out the time and thank you for being such great listeners.